McLaren encourages and trains many future engineers, technicians and scientists. But is our country training enough people with the right skills for the future? Well, I don't think so. But, uh, of course, things can change and the government at the moment is really focused on uh, creating the right envir environment for these sorts of skills to be developed. They're incentivising companies. They are supporting the universities that provide the initial skill sets. And of course, interest, industry as a whole is making a greater effort to generate apprenticeships and postgraduate programmes, etc. So, uh, I don't think uh, we are where we need to be, but I think we're now going in the right direction. Who or what inspired you to become a racing engineer, then a team principal and an entrepreneur? Well, uh, I think everybody has ambition. Uh, it's a question of when uh, that emotion gets ignited in you. Somewhere along the line, something sparks. Uh, the result is a determination to succeed. And then you just really got to work hard and stay focused and believe in yourself. Um, and then as opportunities come along, you just have to seize them and make the best out of them. But uh, the path to uh, success very different as time goes past. So the important thing is always remember, follow your own path and your own dreams and your own ambitions. In the next hundred years, do you think that we will develop new forms of transport and use new fuels such as hydrogen, or will we just make more efficient use of fossil fuels? Well, all of the research that is conducted by the energy companies pretty much supports the view that we need everything. So uh, we need to develop every form of alternative energy. Uh, and we need to be more efficient in utilising the hydrocarbon fuels that are available to mankind. Uh, what we really need to do is try and reduce the global population by some means or another because effectively all the mathematics show that we will ultimately run out of energy. So there's, there's nothing, there's no stone that we can't leave unturned. We have to be very diligent about conservation, but at the same time we have to develop every alternative energy source that possible. The McLaren Group has expanded into many different types of technology. In the future, would you like it to grow into any other areas such as aerospace? Uh, well, uh, we will definitely intend to grow our technology base. Um, aerospace is fascinating, but full of legislation. And one of the things that we tend to do as a motor racing organisation is move very fast. So the sort of exploitation of our uh, technical expertise is um, probably conducted in areas outside aerospace, although we have made things that have gone to the moon. Uh, and you never say never. The reality is you know, we are an entrepreneurially driven company, so as opportunity presents the, uh, itself to us, we, we will sometimes take it and go off in a different direction. But at the moment, the plans are to develop the technologies that come out of our motor racing programs. Cars can now be designed using CFD, wind tunnel models and simulators. Will these tools become so good that you will no longer need to build and test prototypes? Uh, well, we're pretty much there already. Um, most of the uh, development of our racing cars is done through simulation. That, strangely enough, isn't, to, isn't because we are trying to make the driver obsolete in the 
development process. He, in fact, is, very, uh, is a very essential part of the performance loop. The problem we are now faced with in motor racing is the ability to measure very, very small improvements uh, in order that we can then put a quantity, quantity of them together in order that the driver can figure it. So we're talking now in thousands of a second of improvements which the driver in a normal situation wouldn't be able to feel because there's two things happens or that happen on the racing car when you drive it. The fuel uh, gets used, so the car gets lighter and it goes faster. Uh, the tyres wear out, or what we call degrade, which means the car goes slower. And of course you've got weather. So these three things are such, uh, create such variables that the driver wouldn't be able to see these small incremental improvements and therefore we need powers of uh, the powers that simulation give us and the uh, ability to measure small time improvements. These are now essential to the development of a, a Formula 1 car. Now that you have built your own road car engines, won't you be making your own Formula 1 engines? Uh, probably not. Uh, the challenge is uh, technically, I think, within our capability, but the problem is that a Formula One engine program is a, you know, has, has to have a constant uh, development uh, behind it, which is extremely expensive and really only makes sense if you have the scale of, uh, of a company the size of Mercedes Benz that can capitalise on the uh, benefits of success in Grand Prix racing. But for a company of our size, even though we're quite big, it just doesn't make economic sense. So uh, we will always partner with what we call an OE, uh, which means a, a really big car company, uh, in respect of our Formula 1 engines. But again, who knows what the future holds, but that's, uh, that's probably the way it will go for the next few years. Many teams have come and gone in Formula 1. How has the clan managed to stay successful for so long? Well, if I told you, you would probably tell all the other Grand Prix teams. I don't think that's a good idea. But uh, really we just stay focused. And we really have uh, made, uh, made our programs very scientific therefore we are able to measure the improvements that we make to our cars or measure our development programs in such a way that we constantly improve. Uh, if you then take that scientific approach and you blend it with the intense desire uh, that all of our people have to win, we call it our McLaren DNA, then that tends to make the sort of the core ingredients for success. But of course it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, but um, we seem to manage so far, I think we're going to manage fine in the future too. Will your new GT3 car be racing at Le Mans in 2012? Um, it could race uh, in that category, but uh, it's, it's uh, a program that is designed to give customers the opportunity to race the car and it's unlikely, I think, that, that uh, any of them will compete in the mall next year. What are two favourite road cars and two favourite racing cars and why? Well, my two favourite road cars are the McLaren F1 and the 12C. And uh, my two favourite racing cars are the, probably the MV41, which was the first carbon fiber car that we built, and then the car that uh, I had to set around Crossgrove in 1988, which uh, won uh, 15 out of 16 races. And uh, I think um, the reason why is because these are sort of landmark cars in the history of McLaren. Uh, of which I'm part. Thank you very much, Mr. Dennis, for answering all my questions. Thank you. It was very nice to meet you.